Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Thursday. Well, no, no, I'm sorry. Th yeah, Thursday, October the 10th, 2023. Thursday, October the 10th. Well, what happens on Thursday is Nate puts his little plan that he and Audra have talked about into, you know, motion. He comes in and Nikki and Victoria are sitting at the conference table and he goes, good, I'm glad I got you two, both of you two together. And they said, oh, really, Victoria he says, well, what would you like to talk to us about? And Nikki's just looking at him. You know, I was running the numbers, crunching them last night and it actually is a good idea. Um, merging Newman Media with the new McCall. Victoria looked at him and Nikki says, uh, nah, uh, uh. He goes, Adam had a good idea. The two media companies owned by the same company are redundant. And so Nikki says, no, that goes against Victor's wishes. No. And Victoria says, yeah, no, Adam, I don't want Adam, you know, any closer. And he goes, but if you look at it from a business sense, look at look at the numbers. It makes sense. So Nikki goes, well, I'm going to tell you right now. Bottom line, I have a meeting to get to a society. And I'm on Victor's side where this is concerned. They need to be kept separate. Let Adam do what Adam's going to do with his company. Newman Media is working well the way it is. So she says, I'm going to leave you two to talk. She kind of looks at Nate. So she goes to society and Diane, Tucker, and, and uh, Billy are there. Because, you know, Abby's brokering this piece between... Jack and her mom, and she finally got Diane and Tucker to leave. Well, Tucker was more than happy to leave to let Ashley and Jack talk. And Diane and Jack's like, no, no, if Diane is, is, is a member of this family. So then Ashley says, then Tucker stays. And and Jack is still saying things like, you know, that degenerate Tucker and all, the, all of this. So then that gets Ashley, right? Talking about Diane. Jack can't have it both ways. He is so adamant, everybody that want him to even re recognize or, or register that they alive better kiss Diane's feet. So Ashley's the same, well, you better do the same Tucker. So Diane says, no, you know what? Ashley's right. I mean, Abby's right. We, I, um, we want, I'm going to leave because Tucker says, oh, I am more than happy to leave. And Jack says, good, because you probably behind it. Something he says, snipe to, to, to Tucker. Tucker looks at him and he goes, you know, Jack. He goes, I want peace between you and Ashley more than anybody. You couldn't be more wrong. And Jack looked at him and Diana's like, she goes, you know what? I'm with Tucker. We should leave. So they get by the door and Tucker says, Let's go have lunch. And he puts his little elbow out for her to put her arm through it. She looks at him and walks out the door first. Like, I ain't walking out in your arm, right? And he's kind of like, oh, well, whatever. Because he was really making a joke of it anyway. So Jack, I mean, Abby, Ashley says, Abby, honey, can I speak to your Uncle Jack alone? And Abby says, oh, no, no, no. Because you and Uncle Jack will get into an argument. And we don't need any arguments. That's why I'm brokering this conversation. So then he goes, yeah. I mean, for the simple fact, he says something about, because Tucker, this, this, and this. And then Abby says, well, if you wouldn't have married Diane. And see, and Abby goes, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about, both of you. Exactly what I'm talking about. That's why I'm not leaving. Now let's sit down. So they even end up, Ashley says, you know what? I give up. I give in. I'm fine. 
Jack, I'm walking away from this fight. And he says, what is that supposed to mean? I mean, I'm just, I, I'm going to walk away. Uh, me and Tucker are going to start our own company. You have your boat. And in my mind, I'm thinking, but what about your patents? You're not addressing that. Because, see, I, I don't care what's happening. I wouldn't walk away and leave my patents with your boat. Because, see, before they got to the brokering of truce, Billy had called them in at the Jabot boardroom office. And I'm thinking, why would he call them there? And they're talking freely around the little centerpiece plant dish on the table and the conference call phone. And I'm thinking, Billy could be recording you guys. Seriously, I, I, do you not think about that? Anything on that table could have had a recording device in there. I was surprised he didn't record them, right? So he says, look, he goes, so does this mean you're going to come to our side? And he goes, no, I mean, I've got some questions. Like, uh, what's in it for me? If I betray my brother, what's in this for me in the end? And so Ashley says, because he knows they plan on scooping up Jabot under their umbrella. And so she goes, you'll run Jabot. You will be the CEO of our father's company. The whole thing will be in your hands, brother. And he goes, well, now you got my interest. And she said, I figured you might. I said, she said, I figured I might. And he goes, hmm. So she goes, well, we need to go to a meeting. This is before they got to the house, Abby's little broker in a piece. And I would like your answer because that'll let me know what kind of posture I'm coming in with. And he says, all right, I'm in. And when he said, I'm in, oh, Ashley was, oh, she's so giddy and touched his tie. And she says, you won't regret this and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, okay, Ashley, you, you're so one-sided. You're not even really taking into account Billy might be playing you. But you want to know who I think is taking into account Billy might be playing them? Tucker. Because Tucker is just studying Billy. Ashley's just overjoyed. And Tucker's just, hmm. So Tucker says something to Billy on the way out. You know, not not anything flippant or anything, but kind of like, well, you know, good to have your board or something. But he's just looking at Billy. And I thought, keep on looking, Tucker. Keep on checking him out. So then that's when they go to the Abbott house and now blah, blah, blah. So now Abby knows she, I mean, Ashley knows she's got Billy on his side. So that's what she's telling Jack. I'm walking away. Uh-huh. Going backfire on you, Ashley. So, but you know what? I honestly don't think they're going to make this go all Jack's way either. Because it shouldn't. It shouldn't. But see, what, what people are failing to realize is live your life and let Diane do what Diane is going to do. Stop reacting on things she has not even done. Ashley's like, she's going to ruin our father's company. Well, you know what? She's shown no signs of doing that, Ashley. And, she, you know, Billy is there to give her a nudge. Well, guess what? Without nudges, would she do any of that? So I don't agree with that. Diane is not my favorite person, but I honestly, she's not one. She's not my least favorite person. She really isn't. They have not shown us her true backstory yet, yet. We don't know what other trouble she's got. she got herself into in LA. Trust me, Jeremy Stark was not just it. It wasn't. It wasn't. So that all hasn't come to pass yet. And just, they, people just don't know how to let things happen. So anyway, at the end of their little brokering of truths, Abby is so excited. And she, she, uh, she goes, there's nothing more important than family. And Jack says, you know, I, I agree. Of course you agree, Jack. Ashley just said she's walking away. And so 
he says, she goes, Jack, Ashley says, Jack, I would like you at my wedding. You are my brother. And he says, as long as Diane can come. So Abby looks at Ashley. And Ashley says, fine. Because Tucker's going to be a part of the family too. And then Jack kind of, okay, okay. Yeah, see, no, Jack, you can't have it both ways. Can't have it both ways. So good. Now Tucker's going to be your brother-in-law again. So now the rest was, um, okay, Nikki, remember Nikki left to go to society. When she gets to society, there's Tucker, Diane, and Billy. And now Nikki's like, oh, goodness, I have a meeting to get to, but, you know, I can't get here fast enough. So then they're talking about somehow Ashley's waiting to Tucker, you know, and Nikki's like, well, you know what? I don't even know if we're going to make that because Victor's out of the country. <laughs> she, she's like, no, nah, look, don't, we ain't going. Mm -mm, Victor's out of the country. And she goes, and then if he wasn't out of the country, I still don't know if he'd want to go. So, and what did they say to Diane? She said, Diane said something to Nikki and Nikki kind of blew her off. <laughs> and she sat down at the table. So Billy puts on his show saying something really negative to Diane, right? And Diane looks like, wait, what? Even though Diane knows he's supposed to be playing a part, but see, this is why I'm saying stuff like this, where people are trying to be traitor and, 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 and display these public arguments and negative feelings, all parties involved start to wonder, did he really mean that? Well, that was going a little bit far. See, feelings always get hurt. Always. You know, I'm going to show my dis dislike for you. And I'm going to say something like, you know what? You always, you always feel like you got to upshine everybody else. You know, like, look, look, you went and had all that cosmetic work done. You know, trying to take 10 years off your life when you know you're 10 years older than me. See, people are kind of like, did he really mean that? Because, you know, we said we're supposed to show we don't dislike each other, but I don't know. I think he really meant that. See, that's how that always happens, right? <laughs> so Diane says, look, I lost my appetite. So she goes back home and Ashley's already left. And, and Abby's already left. And she tells Jack, she goes, Tucker and I ran into Billy at society. And Jack says, oh, really? And she goes, I don't know, Jack. The way Billy was acting, I think we may need to rethink this. I think he's actually, actually on Tucker and Ashley's side. And Jack goes, See what I mean? Because what Billy said was an ouch to Diane. Hurt her feelings a little bit. Now, Billy is telling the truth about the things that he said. He said, Jack, it'll be easy to, to pull this off. There's a lot of things we could say on either side, right? But just understand what side we're on and people forget what side they're really on. And actually, there's going to come a point Billy's going to forget what side he's on. And I think this is going to be more detrimental to Billy because we all know Billy has those highs and lows and that addictive personality. So this is a hot mess and it's a disaster waiting to happen. So now this was the good part. We have Audre, uh, Adam coming in. Audra's on the phone with Nate saying, look, did you already talk to Victoria? And he's like, I'm going in right now. Goodness. And then she's like, because Adam is going to be, he's breathing down my neck. So sure enough, she looks up and who comes to the turn, through the turnstile, but Adam. She goes, I got to go. So Adam comes in, Audra, and he sits down and she's like, 
Take a seat, Adam. I'm telling you, everybody, I see Audra and Adam together. I see that happening. And then little Miss Sally is not going to like it. She's not going to realize how much she likes. She, she and Adam are alike and need each other. But look, Audra and Adam are alike. And that's a woo. You don't want two completely dark people together. See, Sally could go to the dark side. But basically, she's not. She don't stay on the dark side. Audra lives on the manipulative dark side. And that face at the top with her and Adam, good. I like seeing that face on her because it's not the face with her being in control. Then she's now trying to broker a deal, getting her a position when it happens. And he goes, look, first and foremost, I don't know, it hasn't been decided. It won't, it won't I'm not even thinking about where you might land until you get the job done, okay? Until you get the job done, there's no need for us to speculate on where, where you're going to end up, what what higher level position you're going to end up on. So he goes, my thing, she goes, well, your father is out of the country. So I can't do too much with that. He goes, ooh, but you know what? This needs to be done before we launch. So tick tock, Audra. She goes, I've got Nate working on Victoria. He says, well, if anybody can convince Victoria, it will be Nate. So he ends up leaving and she's like. Oh. So she decides she's going to text Nikki. Now, mind you. Nate, before she, this, while Audra's with Adam, Nate is talking to Victoria. And when, when I mean talking. Mm -hmm. there we go because look it's all I got to do all I got to do is say hey give you a little kissy kiss and Victoria saying you know uh, uh, he goes have you, have you thought about what I said she goes I, I, I'll think about it and he goes because I'm telling you it is a great opportunity Victoria trust me on this and so she goes I like it when you, you know, when you come talk numbers and business and he goes, oh, really? And that's when he gets all in her face and she goes, but I have a 10 minute conference call that I can't reschedule. Otherwise I'd say we could slip away. So he goes, well, then we got 10 minutes. So, oh, they're making out and kissing and making out, right? And she goes, I'll think about it, right? So now Nate's getting confident. Oh, she's going to think about it. So then Nate's gone. And he goes to his office when it's time for her conference call. After the call, conference call, Nikki comes in. And no, 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 no. Nikki got the call to meet Audra. So Nikki goes to see Audra. And or the text message. And Audra is trying to push the merger. And Nikki's like, for one thing, Victor Newman and I are against it. So, because mm -mm. she's like, you know, we haven't had a chance to really talk. And I wanted to just, you know, I've done a great. She goes, yeah, you have done a, a, a good job. And the media is doing well. What's this about? And that's what she's saying. Well, you know, we, we could do. Uh, somehow she words it, you know, the merger and blah, blah, blah. And Nikki's like, you stick to doing doing your job well and let Victor and I and Victoria, let's let us run the company. And I'm just like, yes, okay, understood. And I'm thinking that was like way out of line, Audra, to pitch that to Nikki. You would think if you were really, even though Nate's pitching to Victoria, you're not high enough level to pitch that to Nikki. Nor do you and Nikki have that kind of relationship, which was what which is what Nikki kind of let her know. Well, I don't know who you are, what you're doing. Right? So Nikki comes back to the office. It's just Victoria in there. And she goes, So did you and Nate? 
finally come to a conclusion? She said, yeah, I told Nate I would think about it. She goes, but mm, I've thought about it. I don't, mm -mm, I'm not going for them. Victor, Victoria was never going to go for anything Adam's involved with. She goes, nope. And so Nikki says, good, because the meeting I had with Audra Charles, uh, it's like what, what Nate told us. She told me word for word. Nikki says, Victoria, those two are working together. Those two are working together. And you just need to find out why. She says, watch out for them. Watch them. And Victoria just looked. Because one thing Victoria told Nate, she goes, well, look, if the merger happens, what do you think is going to happen to Audra? She's not going to be the CEO of the merged company. Uh, 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 Adam and Nick and Sharon would be in charge of that company. And so Nate says, Audra will land. I'm sure Audra's going to land in a high position with that merger. Right? He goes, I have every confidence in, in, in her abilities, and, and I'm sure they will too. So she goes, okay, because, you know, wouldn't she think you're, like, turning your back on her? He goes, no. Mm -mm. This is good business. And so Victoria kind of just looked, right? Well, now she told Nikki, no, mm -mm. I'm not going to uh, approve of that. So Nate comes back in and Victoria tells him, she goes, have you thought some more about it? She goes, yes, I have. And it's off the table. No, it's not a good idea to go against my father. Not at all. And I don't want Adam this close to the company. Now, Nate had run into Adam on his, Adam's way out. Nate came from well, almost the gym area, but he, he Nate don't work out, right? <laughs> really, Nate don't work out. And so he, Adam, and he goes, Nate, and he goes, so how are things working at McCall? He said, oh, fine. And he goes, Adam goes, How's Andrew Childs working out? And Nate looked and he goes, don't be coy, Adam. We all know the bind you, you know, you feel you have Audra and Tucker in and something, something he says to Adam and Adam just looked at him. He goes, you know, I'm going to do, he goes, let me worry about McCall and what's best for McCall. I'm going to do, he goes, I know who I am and where I'm going. He says, now, you worry about you. Or he says something else he says, and he goes, goodbye, doc. <laughs> and he walks out. Like, see, you were a doctor a year and a half ago. And now you, you know, you, you just managed to land where you're at. You were a doctor. And Nate just looks at Adam as he walks by like, okay, he can be a problem. Nate is here. Adam is here when it comes to running a business in the business world. There's no comparison, Nate. Period. Now, I wouldn't go ask Adam to consult on a, a, a cardiac patient because Adam knows nothing about medical, nothing, right? Anyway, that's going to be good because Adam ain't, but see, they're playing it wrong. Audra, so then when Nate comes back in and Victoria says it's a no-go and she says, yeah, Audra met with my mother and for some strange reason, she pitched the merger too? And he goes, really? Because he's thinking, I don't know why she went to Nikki. Well, guess what? So then Nate ends up going to Audra's uh, hotel room and said, why would you do that? She goes, time is running out. Adam has me in a corner. He goes, I told you I would handle Victoria and Nikki. You were supposed to handle Victor only. He goes, now guess what? 
it's blown out the water. Victoria says, no, she's not even going to consider it. And I'm just like, then I'm screwed. Then I'm screwed. I, I'm going to lose everything. I'm like, oh, poor thing. You came in as an IPO consultant, girl, consultant, contractor. Yikes. So anyway, she goes to the coffee house. And this is the scene I liked. She gets to the coffee house and Diane is sitting there. And Diane see, looks at her. She, you know, looks at Diane. And you know Audra. Audra's got to come on over. She ain't walking away from nothing. So Audra's, Diane is like, Audra? She sits down. Uh, I think she calls her Mrs. Abbott. And so Diane is talking about Kyle, how was your trip? Oh, business was fine. And she goes, Kyle is doing very well. And so Diane is like, she goes, your son is in good hands. Oh, I mean, in business. See, she did what she loves to do. Give those double-sided meanings. But Diane look, looked at her and when she says, your son is in good hands. Diane went, I mean in business. Right. And Diane says, look, let me tell you. Kyle needs to come back to Marchetti and run it with his wife. Kyle needs his family right now. He's a little confused. Audra says, he doesn't seem confused at all to me. He seems like a man who knows what he wants. And I'm just here to support him any way I can. She goes professionally and personally. And so Diane says, no, you're not the kind of woman. You don't strike me as the kind of woman that is in it for supporting someone else. You always have an agenda and something has to be in it for you. And I'm thinking, cause Diane is looking at her saying, girl, I was you, still am you. <laughs> and more than twice your age. So you know I can spot you cause I'm looking at me. And so Audra says, well, no, Kyle is, from what I gather, he's tired, tired of you all. He needs a break. And she goes, what do you mean a break? A break from all of you. That's what I just says to, to, to Diane. Kyle needs a break from all of you. He's ready to move on. Oh, so you know Diane, uh, which is what I knew. Can't wait. Diane is going to now, Audra's going to be in her crosshairs and she's going to want to spit her out. And the good thing is Audra is just that opponent. She is. Audra's going to do a whole lot of division before things are going to be able to come back together again. And good. See? Now Ashley's going to have her attentions divided from what's happening with Javo to what's happening to Kyle. Audra, on the other hand, is losing a lot. She's preoccupied. But her spitefulness and everything is going to come out and she's just going to jerk Kyle around. Because, you know, Kyle's great cushy job is going to be in jeopardy, right? Hmm, poor Audra in jeopardy. So anyway, that's that's one part I loved. I love the fact that they finally had Audra and Diane interact with each other. And it went just the way I thought it would, everybody. Just the way I was hoping it would. So that's pretty much it. Nothing else happened. Um, let's go to Comic Corner, Comic Corner. LaShanta says, Daniel and Mariah both judgmental. Look at how she judged Summer. Yes, exactly. It's mighty funny, Kyle. Never meant summer no good. 
she made her own choices. Um, I remember Phyllis saying she was leaving and she said no. Phyllis asked uh, to speak and Chris interrupted her. Have a seat, Chris. Um, I can't believe Chris didn't show grace. Yes, Phyllis. Yes, Phyllis. Hate. Wait, Chris hate that. I know, right? What about Carson? Isn't it funny? Seemed like all Carson had to do was give his little statement and Carson is skippity doo dah free, right? Just Wow. Carson got off easy. Anita says, the scene with Adam and Nate at the GCAC was very interesting, especially when Adam called Nate Doc and walked away. I know. Um, and then Anita says, Phyllis was, uh, was so darn good. I got emotional watching Phyllis. She is great. I actually believed her. I know. I know. I'm just so happy they put that to a close, everybody. They they tidied that whole crazy botched up storyline that could have never succeeded. The only thing that came out of it is Summer lost her, her happy family. Gone. Feel kind of sad for that because she really liked running that company with her husband. She really liked raising Harrison with Kyle. Even though, you know, Diane was a little ugh to her, but she I could handle even living in the same house with Diane. And now all of that is gone because of Phyllis. But anyway, everybody, uh, that's it for the day. I'll be back tomorrow for another daily recap of The Young and the Restless.